Right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I guess echoing Pete's point, I mean, it really is um, an exciting time to be in this particular industry. Um, and I guess over the next sort of few years, as our sort of products un unfold, and uh, uh, you'll see that it becomes ever more exciting as well. So um, I'm just going to run through um, a number of facts and figures, I guess, which update some of the data um, shown in that particular presentation. And then give you a flavor for some of the um, investments that we're making with our academic um, partners and some of our SMEs in um, innovations and I guess how that provides an opportunity for investment in the UK for particularly for companies with the capability of industrializing some of these um, technologies. The first stage, I guess, in our, in our growth um, is now out in the public domain with the, with the, um, the Evoke, which has been fantastically received. Um, and we've announced something like £3 billion worth of supply contracts purely in the UK um, in support of that vehicle. That in itself has created 2,500 jobs in the UK at Halewood. Now, um, if you use the recognized multiplier um, of about four jobs for every job that an OEM creates is created in the supply chain, that's 10,000 jobs we've added in the UK just on the back of the Evoke success. Um, and it's already won, I think, probably more awards than any other car um, out in the marketplace. Some updates, as I said, from the video. We are actually investing over £2 billion in product creation over the next 12 months. That's a mixture of engineering, R&D, and um, investment in our facilities. Um, so Castle Bromwich and Solihull and Halewood are the recipients of um, the manufacturing investment. We actually have as a business the largest hybrid engineering um, function in the UK with over 240 engineers. And in the last two years, and I find this sort of quite staggering, we've actually recruited ourselves over 8,000 people in two years. Um, and if you sort of use the multiplier, that's you know, 32,000 people in the UK in the supply chain as well. Um, we're recruiting graduates at, a, uh, at, a very incre at an increasing rate, um, over 300 in the last two years, and over 100 advanced apprenticeships as well, just to ensure that we have the skills coming through our business to, I guess, sustain our, our long-term development. And we're also very proud of receiving a Corporate Social Responsibility Award, Platinum Award, in 2012. In terms of more recent highlights, um, some of the key markets that you can see there, I mean, we are fortunate in having um, a UK operation operating in more, selling cars in probably more than any um, other OEM um, in terms of markets, so we can move cars around the world as markets um, um, go hot or cold. Um, but certainly the developing markets are driving a lot of our growth at the moment, with Russia up 43% for Jaguar, Land Rover 38%. Similarly, Brazil um, up significantly for both brands. And um, even in the US, where the economy, I guess, is um, stuttering a little bit, we're still seeing significant growth in our products. And finally, China con continues to be um, a stellar performer for us. Now, you know, what are the basics um, upon which JLR's growth is, is based? And I think this is important to understand. I mean, it is a very balanced strategy based on logic. Um, you know, clearly we need to invest in innovation and um, capability and capacity to maintain our existing products um, in, in, the, in, the, in the competitive position in the marketplace and keep up with customer requirements. But we're also operating in the premium sector, so you know, we're competing head-on with our German um, competitors, so we have to be leading in technology and innovation in many of the areas that um, the customers expect us to operate in. And that drives us down um, trends on consumer electronics and the connected car, which I'll talk about in a little bit more detail later. Um, we're looking to get more derivatives off our products so that we can sweat our assets more. Um, so we've recently announced a sports break version of our um, XF saloon. And I guess watch this space for um, further products. And we're also investing in new products in new sectors. So the Evoke is probably the first example of that that you'll see. Um, but again, you know, our, our product cycle has many other opportunities that we're looking at. And lastly, along with the rest of the industry, we're looking at lightweighting and downsizing. In terms of what we spend with our supply base, um, you know, si significant growth over the last two years. And, and in 2012-13, we will be spending well in excess of £9 billion with our suppliers. 
And for the UK, over 50% of our um, supply spend is actually with UK suppliers. So um, that's very important for the UK economy. So I guess as a message to anybody wishing to invest in the UK, there is, you know, in, in, in tandem with the announcements by Vince Cable this morning, you know, there is a big opportunity for Jaguar Land Rover um, suppliers over the next few years. So in, in terms of innovation, then, what, what sort of mega trends are we seeing and where do we see that we need to focus our attention? Well, clearly, CO2 uh, reduction and electrification is a key trend. And uh, Mike will talk a little bit about one of our specific projects um, in a few minutes. The intelligent vehicle, um, what we mean by that, we have the capability at the moment with all the sensors, the cameras, the parking sensors, the blind spot monitors, to integrate all that and um, connect it to electric power steering, electronic brakes, to have pretty much autonomous driving. So the technology is there at the moment. It's probably the legislation which is um, waiting to catch up. But we see this as a major trend that um, you know, we're playing a leading role in developing with the academic institutions. Similarly, um, vehicles in the connected world, um, you know, the iPod generation these days expect to have the same functionality in their cars as they have on their phones, and that puts enormous pressure on us to sort of keep up with that trend. So a huge amount of investment and um, innovation being driven through our electrical and electronics departments. Um, and we collaborate with, you know, not only with Warwick University, Warwick Manufacturing Group and other universities, but with the gaming industry. You know, we have a thriving, thriving gaming industry in the UK who are very adept at digital development. So, um, you know, we see an opportunity there of um, exploiting those synergies. Um, and the last two, I guess, um, are probably more focused on Jaguar Land Rover brand values, where we, are, we really do see design as one of our sort of key um, brand themes. We have a very, very talented um, set of designers for both brands. And one of the things that we constantly look out for is technologies that enable us to take advantage of some of the um, design themes that these um, designers want to exploit. For instance, you know, Jaguars have very low bonnet lines, which is a key um, desirable aspect of the, of the car's feature. And we have to develop things like pyrotechnical deployable bonnets to meet head impact requirements, but at the same time allow us to have a very low bonnet line. So, and similarly at Land Rover, I guess we have, we have similar um, design challenges which drive some of the technology. Then in terms of vehicle capability, um, Land Rover is renowned for having um, the best off-road vehicles in the world, so we must make sure that we keep pushing the boundaries of that technology with, you know, we invented hill descent control, um, and um, we have many patents on the way that we control the um, technology around the car to enable the cars to do what they can do. And similarly, Jaguars, um, you know, they are very much a driver's focused performance car, so similarly, we need to make sure we drive the technologies to um, make sure those brand promises come true. So where do we see um, the strengths in the UK supply chain then? Um, well, clearly I've mentioned we have um, a lot of collaboration with um, universities. And I mean, I was surprised when I sort of investigated this in a little bit more detail. We're actually number two in terms of uh, research quality and capability, second only to the US. And if you look at the, I guess, the revenue that's going through those institutions, we, we punch significantly above our weight. We have um, clearly engineering excellence, a lot of very talented engineers. Uh, and it's no secret that you know, we work closely with, say, the Williams Formula One team in developing some of our products um, because we see an awful lot of synergies and crossover between those industries. The UK is the second largest premium automotive um, country producer in the world after Germany. Um, we have class-leading design. We're renowned for it not only in the automotive but outside of automotive as well. And likewise, we have a very innovative cult culture. We have a very thriving creative industry. And we actually see that coming across into our um, engineering and, and design organizations as well. And then lastly, um, you know, we are um, leading the world in lightweight structures. Um, we have the largest aluminium body shop in the world at Solihull. Um, and a lot of that technology was a world first on XJ, where we made the first monocoque out of recycled aluminium. So I guess sort of expanding on that, yes, um, we have world-ranking universities for those who are interested in um, exploiting the UK as a place to invest. Definitely have an innovative culture. World-class research, world-class designs, and the Evoke is an example of that, which has won numerous awards around the world. 
and we have a fantastic Formula One industry with a majority of the teams based in the UK. Um, and there is an awful lot of crossover going on at the moment between, um, I guess, the, the, the industry in, the, in Formula One is driving the pace of change so dramatically, particularly around electrification, where we had rules around curves. A lot of those have enabled small SMEs to develop um, really interesting technologies that Jaguar Land Rover, you know, offer a route to market. Um, and one of the challenges, and I guess at the same time, is an opportunity for guys in this room who are looking to invest is, you know, transferring five a week into 100,000 a year of some of this sort of promising technology. So a, a really good, I think, unique time in the industry um, for people who are um, looking to invest to take advantage of this, of this particular point. And premium products I've mentioned and lightweight uh, leadership as well. So I personally think the UK is in a fantastic place um, at the moment and fantastic opportunities driven through Formula One and through our research operations and the way the industry is developing into its next phase of development. So at that point, um, I'll hand over to Mike, who's going to uh, talk a little, about, little bit about one of those projects. Thank you. I'm back actually, it's Mike in a minute. But uh, so, why low carbon technologies? Why, why are we developing them? Well, this, this slide is one we use internally. It's, it's, it's a uh, measure of legislation around the world where it's, where it's been, where it's come from, and a projection of where we think it's going in terms of fleet carbon emissions for, uh, for each manufacturer. There's a couple of, uh, couple of clear things about that slide. You don't need to look at the, uh, at the detail too much. All the, all, the slide, all the lines are going down and they're converging. So the demands upon the vehicle manufacturers of the world are to make less and less carbon emissions from their vehicles over the next, over the next 20 years. But it's not all about legislation. The, the demand for this is, is coming from customers. I think it's fair to say that's been slow to start, but we can certainly see that trend increasing now. And, and for, for ourselves, it's clearly we've got to be developing this technology to be competitive as well. So what is our strategy? We've got a number of technology strands that we're developing over the, uh, over the next years and the past years. We already started by introducing stop-start systems onto our cars. We've introduced those first on our manual transmission cars and our, and our autos. Uh, we will introduce our first full hybrid next year. Uh, we're also working on, uh, as well as full hybrid, on mild hybrids uh, and plug-in hybrids, such as the uh, sort of project that Mike will be talking about in a minute. Uh, EVs and range extended EVs and the whole the whole suite of ele electrification technologies but it's not just it isn't just this electrification which brings you low carbon vehicles you've got to work on the whole the whole vehicle there's no magic bullet here as Dave said you we're pretty good at making lightweight cars we've uh, we've got pretty good aluminium construction technology and lightweight is a really good way of making a, a low emitting vehicle You've got to work on all of the other parasitic losses, the, the aerodynamic losses, the, the drag from tires, the drag from mechanical components, and work on how you manage the, the electrical loads on the vehicle. Also, we, would, we have to work on the efficiency of our, of our conventional internal combustion engines and transmission systems, and also to reduce the size of those, to make them more efficient so we can, we can get the same performance out of our cars with smaller engines. Because there's no point making cars that are, that are low in emissions if nobody wants to buy them. It's absolutely essential that, that our cars remain tremendously desirable for our customers in the way that Dave talked about. They've got to look fantastic. They've got to be great to drive. And for a Land Rover, they've got to have this tremendous spread, this breadth of capability that really only a Range Rover's got. Only a Range Rover can go off-road in the way it does and arrive at Buckingham Palace and not look out of place, even if you haven't cleaned it. So, it's really important that they, these, these values of our cars to the customers are re retained because, as I say, you can make the, the, the finest low emission cars in the world. If you can't sell them, they don't count. So that's, that's essential. And we're working, on, we're working on a number of technology projects. And as a case study, we want now to, uh, to talk about the Revolution project, which, uh, which Mike's, going to, uh, Mike's now going to cover. <laughs> 